unlike China, Vietnam came under the direct rule of the French in the mid-19th century. Just like how Britain ruled India, French ruled Vietnam with the puppet Vietnamese Emperor. Let us have a look at the colonial experience of Vietnam and the struggle for independence. All the aspects of Vietnamese life were influenced by the Vietnam just like Britain did to India. Eventually, the Vietnamese considered on these issues and tried to build a national resistance movement. On the other hand, the French were eager to build Vietnam as an exporter of rice. To achieve this, they adopted a three-fold strategy. The three-fold strategy included improvisation of irrigation network, encouragement of landlords and facilitating marketing of the agricultural produce which includes rice and rubber. The French built canals and draining lands with the help of forced labor in the Mekong Delta to facilitate cultivation eventually increase the production of rice which in turn led to the export of the rice to the international market. Nearly two-thirds of the rice produced in Vietnam was exported and by 1931 it emerged as the third largest exporter of rice in the world. The infrastructure projects were also improved to facilitate transportation of goods, move military garrisons and control the entire area. The construction of Trans-Indochina Rail Network was started that connected the northern and southern parts of Vietnam and China. If we look at the conditions in Vietnam during this time, the economy was mainly based on rice cultivation and rubber plantations that were owned by the French and elite Vietnamese. Bounded labor was used significantly in the rubber plantations. While the culture of landlords began to spread in rural areas, the standard of living for the peasants came down. The French, on the other hand, contributed very little for the industrial growth of Vietnam. The years of confiscation of lands, giving of direct concessions to French colonists and a few Vietnamese supporting the French resulted in concentration of lands in the hands of large and wealthy landlords. This in turn worsened the lives of the Vietnamese peasants who had very little or no land as they got caught in cycles of debt. The high interest rates, exorbitant land rents and high taxes imposed by the landlords or the village elites added to their woes. The statistics on the landlessness and land ownership in the 1930s are the evidence to the disastrous conditions of the Vietnamese peasants during that time. According to a study done in 1952-53 by the French government, nearly 53% of the families were completely landless in Annam in 1938. On the other hand, nearly 58% in Tonkin and 79% in Cochinchina were totally without land. Students, just imagine the condition of the landless peasants when the families that owned land lived close to starvation in the 1930s. The peasants who rented the land of the landlords had to pay rent in the share of produce as well as work on the fields and in the homes of the landlords and also pay different kinds of taxes imposed by the landlords. How do you think they could survive in such conditions? They had to borrow rice and money from the landlords which pushed them further into debts and bondage of the landlords. The French colonizers like the British were convinced that the people in the colony were uncivilized and hence their objective was to bring in the benefit of the modern civilization. In this view, education was seen as a tool to civilize the native people. Although the French were in need of an educated labor force, they were also scared that it might create problems like questioning of the colonial domination by the Vietnamese. In addition, the colons or the French citizens who lived in Vietnam feared losing their jobs as teachers, shopkeepers, policemen. As a result, they were against the policies that facilitated Vietnamese complete access to French education. Moreover, 
even if Vietnamese language was taught in primary level, the higher education was all in French. As a result, only the elite in Vietnam, who contributed a small fraction of the Vietnamese population, enrolled in schools, and only a few of the admitted got through the school leaving examination. Amidst these circumstances, don't you think Vietnam waited to free itself from the colonial rule? Now, let us see what the conditions that triggered Vietnamese nationalism were. have seen the textbooks glorified and justified the French rule. But the teachers and students did not blindly go by the curriculum prescribed. While there was open opposition sometimes, there were other times when the resistance was silent. As the number of Vietnamese teachers increased, there arose a difficulty in controlling what was taught in the schools. The Vietnamese teachers modified the text while teaching and criticized the then existing conditions. The students fought against the colonial government which tried to prevent the Vietnamese from qualifying for white collar jobs. The Vietnamese students were influenced by patriotic feelings and they strongly felt it was the duty of the educated to fight for the benefit of the society. As a result, there was conflict with the French and the traditional elite as they saw both their positions threatened. By the 1920s, the students formed various types of political parties like the party of Young Annan and published nationalist journals like the Annani students. In the beginning of the 20th century, the Vietnamese students went to Japan and acquired modern education, while for most of them, the primary aim was to drive away the French from Vietnam and bring down the puppet emperor ruling Vietnam and re-establish the new dynasty that was forced out by the French. Students, the Vietnamese also got inspired to establish a republican and democratic rule in Vietnam after the republican revolution of Sun Yat-sen in China. As a result, many students went to China, France and later to USSR to get educated and study about new political ideas. Students, the Great Depression that we learned that occurred in 1930s had a strong influence on Vietnam. The prices of rubber and rice came down which led to increased rural debts, unemployment and struggles in rural areas. The French opposed the uprisings with great force and even used planes to bomb the demonstrators. In February 1930, Ho Chi Minh, who spent time in France and USSR and inspired by the militant demonstrations of European parties, brought the competing nationalist groups together to set up the Vietnamese Communist Party or the Vietnam Kong Sang Dang which was later renamed as the Indo-Chinese Communist Party. In 1940, Japan occupied Vietnam as a part of the imperial drive to control Southeast Asia. In 1940, Japan occupied Vietnam as a part of the imperial drive to control Southeast Asia. As a result, the nationalists had to fight the French and also the Japanese. The League for the Independence of Vietnam or Vietnam Doc Lab Dong Mien, which came to be known as the Viet Minh, fought against the Japanese occupation and recaptured Hanoi, the Vietnamese capital, in September 1945. The Democratic Republic of Vietnam was formed and Ho Chi Minh became the chairman. When Viet Minh assumed power in August 1945, they immediately issued a circular for 25% reduction in land rents, cancellation of all secondary rents and cancellation of all arrears in rent which are owned by tenants before August 1945. In addition, the policy of redistribution of communal land and land owned by French and Vietnamese traders was adopted. Students, 
Now let us have a look at the new Republic of Vietnam. The new Republic of Vietnam had to face a number of challenges. The French tried to come into power again by using Bao Dai, the emperor of the Nguyen dynasty, as their puppet. The military operations of French forced the Viet Minh to retreat to the hills. Finally, after eight years of struggle, the French were defeated in 1954 at Dien Bien Phu and nearly 16,000 French soldiers and officers were taken as prisoners. The Vietnamese were made to accept the division of the country in the peace negotiations in Geneva after the French defeat. As a result, the north and south parts were divided, while the Ho Chi Minh and communists assumed power in the north. The old emperor was given powers in the south. But the old emperor was soon brought down by Nao Di Dien, who introduced a repressive and authoritarian government. The government that was built by Ngo Dinh Diem was in such a way that anyone who opposed him was jailed and killed. His dictatorship was fought by an opposition that was united under the banner of the National Liberation Front. On the other hand, in North Vietnam, a soft policy was adopted by the Viet Minh with regard to land reforms which dealt with ensuring reduction in land rents and confiscating only lands of landlords who openly took the side of French or Japan. But after 1954, a new set of land reforms was started in North Vietnam in which the lands of landlords were confiscated and redistributed among the landless and poor peasants. This step won huge support of the Vietnamese peasants whose long-cherished dreams of owning a piece of land was then fulfilled.